I have a vision that I wanted to share with you today, and it is a vision of a post-scarcity human future, a time that you will see in your lifetimes where poverty is rare and resources are abundant. And that's what we're going to talk about today in the cislunar iconosphere. So you know, the perspective of this, the context, is that we are sitting here in this room, and all around the world, people are struggling, often due to a shortage of resources, and sadly, more often than not, in conflict. And yet, a week from where we are sitting here, right at this very moment, is such an abundance of natural resources that it defies human imagination. There are over 17,000 near-Earth asteroids that are absolutely rich in minerals and metals and natural resources. And they are very close to where we are. They're just beyond our grasp. We're talking about, quite literally, two trillion kilograms of industrial metals. Iron, nickel, cobalt, titanium, rhodium, rhenium. And our best estimates, perhaps as much as 150,000 kilograms of precious metals. Now, those are big numbers, so let me kind of put them in perspective. Uh, the industrial metals, this is a 1,000 years of the Earth's current production of those materials. And the precious metals, this is more precious metals than have ever been mined in the history of humankind. And it's right there. And up in the other corner of this slide, you see the moon. What's the significance of the moon in a cislunar economy relative to these natural resources? Well, the moon is rich in something that is really the great discovery of our time that has gone largely unheralded, the fact that water is everywhere. And that is significant because water is rocket fuel. It's going to take a lot of fuel to go and develop these resources, and sitting on the moon are 20 billion metric tons of water. Now, to put that in perspective, if some of you might be familiar with the new advanced upper stage we're developing that's really cool, that might be a part of this, that's over 130 million full gas tanks for that, that space vehicle. So these are gigantic resources. These are resources on planetary scale that are right there waiting to be tapped. And of course, not everything in cislunar space, the region between here and the moon, is about being that far away even. When you look at the little graphic down in the corner, we're talking about things that would be done closer to home. It turns out that there is manufacturing of materials that can really only be practically done in microgravity. So for example, ultra-pure materials like ultra-pure fiber optics that make a tremendous difference in the ability to move high-speed data, long distances, kind of like the internet, for example. The 3D printing or additive manufacturing of human tissues that are really only possible in microgravity because the structures are so fine. And of course, as we move to the other end, what I'm showing you there is a little picture about the ultimate journey that this could lead us to, which are space-based solar power on grand scale bringing that energy down to Earth. So think about that, solar power in space, where there, there is no night. There is never a cloudy day. The energy density is 10 times what we can have here on Earth. And we can build structures in space with no practical limit from materials that we source in space. And imagine what almost free, ubiquitous, anywhere on the planet, energy would do for the state of human dignity. We're looking at a future in an epoch that is unprecedented in our history. All of this simply by developing the natural resources that are close to home. And of course, people will live and work there. You might live and work there. All of this is within another decade or two if we put our minds to it. There will be thousands of ordinary men and women living and working in space not because they are elite astronauts, but because their jobs are in space, because they can go to space and have a better life. So the key that unlocks this future is a practical industrial transportation system. 
I am working on that every single day. It will look something like this. There are natural places to put infrastructure. There are these resources we talked about. This is the future that will create a multi-trillion dollar economy in cislunar space that does not exist today. This is an entirely new economic activity. And it's not about ULA, it's not about any one company. It will take many, many people, many, many companies to bring this to bear. We have sort of put together this thing we call the Cislunar Marketplace, where we've gathered up over 200 entrepreneurs and startup companies that share this vision. I've listed just a few of them on the side there, people like Astrobotics and Planetary Resources, Bigelow, others. And we get them together and we work together on how to build business plans and how to share resources and to understand the infrastructure everyone will need to make this happen, each doing our part. This is a future that you will see. And as sort of next generation space leaders, you can help us bring this about. It's your future. You will make it happen. And I look forward to being there with you. Thank you all. <laughs>